popping. How you niggas doing? You know, I'm feeling like rich niggas popping and broke niggas stopping. <laughs> I like that. Rich <laughs> niggas popping and broke niggas are stopping. <laughs> So let's get to our story time. Okay. There's this video of this woman, and she was saying that men know that they're providers, mm-hmm. and um, that's why men have money, because that's why, how they get their power, and our power is our, our looks. looks. Yeah. So she was saying how men date women they can afford. Yeah. And if you can afford a certain type of woman, you would date her. That's and this guy was trying to get a little pushback, and he was like, well, I'll never date a girl because that's not more than a seven. Yeah, he said, you know, he said he's, he'll never date a girl over a seven. Over a seven. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, because that's all you can afford. Yeah. Which is true. If you want a bad bitch, you have to be able to afford that bad bitch. Absolutely. And a lot of times guys get girls who are the natural mediocre woman because yeah. that's what they can afford. But truly, he's liking pictures of the bad bitch you want to be with. And you know? also, like, I feel like for another step when it comes to bad bitches, it's not even just like we're talking about look-wise. We just got to feel like bad bitch... Like, it gotta, is look-wise, you know, too. I mean, it is look-wise. Yeah. We're saying you got to be a girl that's on her shit, a girl that's this, right. a girl that's that. And then even also when you're a bad bitch, it's like there is a certain amount of respect you get as a man having a woman that looks like that. that and on top of that when she looks like that and she got her own shit yeah like you can't date a bitch who looks like that and on her own shit and think you're gonna be a mediocre of a man and the reason why it's probably not either one he doesn't have the funds or two he's insecure because some other some men might have the funds for right. it but they are too insecure to date a bad bitch and let her be a bad bitch right so they would rather date someone that has less self-esteem and less money to make them their money and power all they need right 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 so right. but uh all this to say that just date within your league We've, I think we hammered it so many times in this yeah, podcast. It's very important. I like a man that can understand I can't afford a bitch. So let me just leave her alone. Because that's actually what happened to me today. Um, I met this guy. It was cool for like a week. We we're going on dates and shit. And honestly, anyone who knows me knows what knows what kind of bitch I am. I yeah. don't have what kind of bitch I am. I like niggas who do shit for me. Yeah. If you are not um, providing for me the way I feel like I should be provided for, then I don't feel there's any use for you. Um, I don't. I have a certain lifestyle that I live. So if you cannot at least match my lifestyle or give me more, then you are useless. Um, um, so he pretty much broke down to me like, oh, I don't think I can carry this relationship on because you want things I can afford. And that's not what he said, but that's pretty much what he said. And I'm like, I, I like that. Like, you knew you couldn't afford me. You knew you can't be with a, keep up with a bitch like me. So you, you, you know, stage exit stage left. And I'd rather you do that than pretend and put up this facade like you can afford a bitch like me. And you're being resentful because you're spending your last on me. And I'm not giving a fuck because, uh, yeah, like, why would I? Yeah. And. It's just, it's sour. So if you know you can only afford to chill and fuck and watch Netflix, (laughs) talk to a bitch who can only cares about chilling and fucking and watching Netflix. A bitch like us... I like to be outside. I'm an out, and I make I'm that an outside very, bitch. I make that very clear. Every time I'm dating, I'm like, I'm an outside bitch. bitch. And I feel like I require one date a week. I feel yeah. like it's very minimal. And we've made it very clear that outside don't got to be expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be regular, regular, smuggler, fun because stuff. Because we, we date a certain type of man. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be expensive. It does not I have to be like expensive. Quality time is literally the bare minimum when it comes to dating someone. Right. And I don't consider chilling at my house something I can do by myself. Considered quality time. It's not. I, it can I, be, but it, not every. Not every it day. Could be, but not. It's not at giving everyday type of situation. No. It, it, it never gave broke. <laughs> Does anything <laughs> about us give broke? Never gave broke. Never give that. Okay, so because we're back at it again with another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill, where we create conversations. All oh, wow. Sip and one. I go by the myth like motherfucking Sammy, and I'm ambitious material girl Teray. Wow. So let's get into our highs and, and lows. lows. Okay, what is your high and what is your low for this week? Okay, so my high for this week is that I worked on Sunday, and I don't usually work on Sunday, and I made money. Mm-hmm. A low for this week is I've been really fucking tired, like excessively tired, and. I I, my productivity hasn't been as high, but you know, your girl's coming off of her, you know, her mother nature. So she's back and better than ever. And I'm about to get the shit done. Okay. What's your highs and lows? My high is I, well, well it kind of happened last week, but getting hired at crew. Yeah. That's a high. Congratulations. Thank you. Crew familia. Uh, my low this week is, you know, meeting a guy that I really liked for a little bit and then him just being like, oh, I can afford you so bye. <laughs> And the thing is, like I said, we we can take our losses in public yeah. because guess what? 
we're human just like you yeah. all are. And I'm a certified lover girl. I taught her go for it. I said, girl, I have I, fun. I, I, like like we say, some guys are here for a reason. Some guys are here for a season. I don't think every man's going to be my man. Absolutely. Um, he he was here for a fun ride and he gave me something I needed at the moment. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And because it didn't like, turn into something, I'm definitely okay with that because yeah. I would never deal with a man who has no money. So, and it's just, not just that, he came with other baggage too. Facts, yeah. So it's like all these things I really, really want to deal with, but I was ignored because I was like, oh, he's so fun. I like him. But you know what? I snap back to reality real motherfucking quick. Yeah. Like I'm gonna say once to the B R O K E. Girl, just, I snap. She, the girl came in with a story, a story and a fucking chip on her shoulder. The bitch came in like, bitch. I said. <laughs> Girl, that turned me off so fast. I was like, girl, I like him. I like him. And I, I heard broke up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the like went out the motherfucking the window. The baggage didn't stop her. The broke stopped her. The broke stopped her. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into some motherfucking wine facts. So we can get into some motherfucking tea time. Tea, tea time. time. So you guys, you know, we haven't been doing our best when it comes to wine facts, but I'm going to give you what we have and what we have now. And we're coming here live from Creators Guild while we are sitting here on the couch and we are about to drink open skies. Open skies. Don't y'all like them? How they look in the fucking... Huh? You know, it was going somewhere. Okay. But, th- but then I got stopped. So we're drinking a red blend and it's a California 2020. I like being a red blend. I do too. We haven't had one in a long time. A long time. So these are our fruit forward red blend is bursting with ripe flavors of blackberry dark cherry and a touch of vanilla leading to a smooth finish. So that sounds like every fucking wine that we drink because we <laughs> rarely ever drink white wines like ever. But I try to incorporate it once in a while. Once in a while. But you know what? I'm going to do we it next week. We are. I'm gonna get we are who we are. So get my white lady let's on. try this really quick. Not you pouring yourself first. Because yours is all the way over there. Wow. Right in front of the white Girl, if you don't bring me your glass, I'm not reaching. Girl, you better reach. <sighs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. Just give so, me a big glass so I don't got to keep doing it. I was going to say, and then so yeah. I'm going to reach over to get it because well, now what? Yeah, let's just give us each other a big glass. We don't got to keep doing this shit. Hello. Ow. And I didn't get anything on the, on the glass. So I'm so proud of myself. Okay. Cheers mm-hmm. to another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill. Ow. Okay. It's very light. It's very light. Okay. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a lot deeper. What's it called? Open what? Open field? Open sky. Open sky. <laughs> open sky. <laughs> um, okay, open sky. I don't, I don't, there's nothing, anything particularly like say, great about it. There's nothing great about it. Yeah. It's just I mean, very well, it was average. under $10, so. Well, then bitch, that's why. Well. It's giving $10 wine. It's giving, it's giving B-R-O-K-E. But it's giving, it's okay, <laughs> because you know what? We are. We took our shots. <laughs> What was the alcohol content? Did you know? No, Check. I'm a look. I'm a look. But while I look, let's get into some motherfucking tea <clears throat> time. Tea time. Um, we actually looked up how to say this man's name, and I t- definitely forgot. It's like Hak 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 Hakimi. No, it's. I hate to fuck up someone's name because I feel like knowing people's names before, especially when it's, it's foreign. Fourteen point five percent alcohol content. So that's 5? crazy that we taste nothing. Ooh, okay. Let me figure out how they say this man's name. Real quick. It's because I think it's a poor, especially foreign names. I want us to uh, yeah, work on you saying. You want to learn how to say Chiamaka? Um, if I want you to say my name, I got to learn how to say your name. Say my name. Say my name. Ashraf Hakimi. I told you, Ashraf Hakimi. Hakimi. It sounds like you know how Mortal Kombat do like. How the, sure. how the, yeah, that's the same tone he's saying it. So, Akshraf Akimi is a Moroccan uh, football player. player. Okay, soccer player. Um, that's politically correct. Yeah. Football. Um, and he was married to a woman named Abak. Oh, Hiba Abak. I'm sorry. Her first name is Hiba. And, um, so she is, you know, trying to divorce him or is in the process of divorcing him. Yeah. And she found out, unfortunately, he has all his money and assets signed to his mama's name. Mm-hmm. So all his checks are not in his name. It's in his mama's name. And she is technically not entitled of any of that money because it's the mom's money. And I see a lot of guys are like, checkmate, oh, reverse uno when he tries to call his money, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I'm like, let's get into some details. Let's, get let's, into some let's details. find out why, why she she's divorcing this him. man. So she is divorced and his soccer player who signed all of his money to his mommy because he is an investigation for raping a 19-year-old girl. Let's let this sink in for a second. 
he raped a 19 year old girl. So of course, as a woman, as as any woman would, you would would immediately leave a man who's under investigation for rape. Yeah. I don't want to be touched to that. uh, Yeah. So it's like check mail. She's not getting no money. She's not getting no money. And we were saying how as we are, as women, we know that a man can always leave you at any moment. Absolutely. And look at, look at Shakira and PK. Yeah. How long they were married. And then like 15. And then he's, these are for a 20 year old woman. Like men will leave you for a woman half your age. We all know that. So because we know that men are sometimes unreliable, um, you should definitely have a, what's it called? A prenup? secure, uh, well, a prenup and, and a, like a, you, a, gonna, a safety net. I was going to say, yeah, you should definitely make sure that you are in the best position possible when, for the when, worst things to happen. Leave and or when you decide to leave them. Yeah. I think that I am a hundred percent for prenups. And um, I think there's, I think it's like post something. Post, Pauses. Post post nup. Okay. Like it, something before y'all get married and something after you guys get married. Okay. So I also believe, I believe in prenups. Absolutely. Protect your assets. But right. guess what? While you're protecting your assets, I'm protecting myself. So I'm a woman that believes that I will stash money to the side. As My, you should. I, I feel that you should never rely solely on the likelihood that this man is going to be the man that loved you. Because when they love you, they love you when you're young and beautiful. When you mm-hmm. get older and they get bitter and they start finding more fun things to play with. Yeah. Then I taught you to decide like you haven't been a fucking stay at home mom for the last 10 years. Right. And that's why we saw a video where this woman was like, if you are going into an arrangement, because that's what fucking marriage is at this point. It's a fucking arrangement business deal with a man. You should tell him if I'm going to be a stay at home mom for X amount of years, I get paid this stipend X amount every single year. If I'm home taking care of your children, because yeah. I'm losing out on the opportunity of being in the workforce. Because when you leave me, that's where I have to return to. Right. The and I'm leaving with no fucking experience, but I'm leaving being a mother. And like a gap in your resume is like so detrimental. The worst, the worst, because they're looking at you like, what were you doing all these times? What were you doing oh, all the time? I was, I was building a family. Right, I was taking care of kids, and then they're like, okay, you have kids. This other em- uh, possible employee don't, don't have, have kids. kids. You're not gonna get hired. They're gonna pick the one that who don't have kids because they have more time to work. Yep. So, um, just women all around the world, please just be smart. And if you're dating a man with who is financially who is especially very financially stable like that, mm-hmm. put in closets to make sure you're protected because some a man will love you one day and the next day want to leave you homeless. We've mm-hmm. seen it. Leave I'm on TikTok. You fucking dead. They will leave you for dead ho. My man, my man, my man, my man. Your man will leave you for dead ho. And I'm I've seen it. My man, my man, my man. But my man gonna motherfucking know I'm gonna leave you for dead. Okay. Uh, let's. What's next? What's next? Marcus um, Houston, Marquis, Marcus, Marquis Houston, Marcus Houston. Houston. Um, there was a video going around of him talking about how he met this girl when she was 17 Mm -hmm. but he never touched her until she was of age Mm -hmm. and how I met his wife and he's like God told me she was going to be my wife and he was just trying to explain to us why as a 30 something plus year old man yeah he's he's actually almost pushing 40 I think Damn, how old is... Can you look up how old Marcus Houston is? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. And how old his wife is? Look up the story. Um, I don't say... We can... You can still talk about it while I look up his age because I know he's, like, pushing 40 because he's been around since, like, early 90s. I remember when I thought Marcus Houston and Amari were brothers. I think we all thought that at once in life. Everyone thought they were brothers. He's 41! 41! And his wife is, I believe, like, 1920. 1920. Baby. And we Marcus, you don't got lie to us. And the thing is, me and Samantha had this conversation actually off camera, too, because I dated someone that was seven years older than me. She was like, so what? What does a 26-year-old have anything in common with a 19-year-old? Yeah. And I'm like, absolutely nothing. Because when you look back at it, you have to think about it. These men are at their age where they're only here to take your youth. Yeah. They want you while you're young. Mm-hmm. They want you when you're desirable to others. They want to say, I have this woman off the market that's my mine. And That's by the what time you're 30, 30, 31, 30, exactly. Mm-hmm. When you're 30, 31, when your, your dating accessibility is gone down because you only, cause you got older, not because of any other reason, yeah. but because you got older. older yeah. Now it's like, every, there's, there's more young and more impressionable people. Yeah. They want your youth. That's really what it is. And then the fact that he wants to hide behind the fact of saying, Religion. Yeah, religion. And God. God told me and God told me this. And I'm like, we God, just God did not tell you to talk to a 19 year old woman. I promise you. And that. I feel like we got to stop not. like using that as a a a scapegoat for these predators because we even saw that video of the Dalai Lama what we were talking about where he was telling a child that was clearly uncomfortable to suck on his his tongue tongue. and his parents were present while he was telling the son to do that but guess what because he is a righteous figure he is someone that everyone looks up to 
you are willing to put your child in danger for the same for I don't know. R. Kelly was probably singing church songs to these bitches. In it the fucking, was. And I'm like, why are we allowing people in power to do these kind of things? But if we met someone on the street, that shit, we, we wouldn't even. Because wa- men have men with money have power. Like we said, our commodity, our money is our youth. Yeah. Like when you're young and beautiful and look a certain way, it gives you access to certain type of men. Men have access to certain type of women when they have money. So yeah. it's just like it's it sounds bad to say, but it's actually the truth. Because he is, he has this money. Yeah. He's able to have access to this girl. And she is a little girl. Because you cannot tell me he did not wait till she was 18 to start talking to her. That man was talking to her when she was 17 and he was 40 years old. And the or thing 40, is, let's 40, get 40, even deeper. I'm going to say even deeper. I feel like this is a t- conversation we should have that is not going to be a whole topic. Is like grooming. grooming he was grooming her. Real. I'm going to say grooming is real. They try to befriend you and act like they are here for your well-being and that and they're not. looking out for you. But she's probably dealing with maybe father issues. I, I don't know the story. But I can say for someone who but was younger— also, as a woman, we do enjoy older men. We love this ability that we believe they get, can give us. We love what they can offer us. We love that they can teach us. We love older men. Like, we do. As we just look, we I'm love to date older than me. But I'm just saying. We tend to date like, older. But, it's just how but it is. being older now, I would never entertain someone while I was younger. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. While I was 19, I should have dated 21, 23, 24 year olds. Same. And I feel like now that I'm 29, my boyfriend's a perfect age. I'm like. 35 perfect I mean perfect. we have more in common we have more well we don't have a lot in common but we just in love so I'm just saying I feel like when you're older you actually your brain is actually more developed you are making sound decisions you're not going off of the fact that you don't have any money because you, you know when you're younger it's kind of off of survival yeah and now that I'm I, I always he told is you 41 married to a 19 year old and woman. now that, that I'm older sad. and I have money I would not dare talk to someone just for the fact of stability I talk to you off of combat compatibility and stability Stability is important, but I'm saying I want to be self sufficient without you. But you can't. hundred percent, hundred percent. I feel like as a woman, I I like the fact that I can take care of myself if needed. But I also want you to take care of me. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's but a very I'm, it's it's very important. Like women, date guys who can also take care of you. Stop dating guys who can't take care of you. And I saw this one video. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, we just keep going off track with this. But this is very important, y'all. It's like this guy was like, made a video and he said this guy met. Um, met my wife and was like, oh, you know, she married you for being a gold digger. He's like, I would rather marry someone that knows. I would rather date someone with money that can help me yeah. than date a broke man and be suffering. And I'm like, and be suffering. Like, I don't want to suffer. suffer. I don't, don't I don't suffer. believe you struggle up. Black American women are the only group of women that are forced to believe that it's okay to be with a man who has nothing. Mm-hmm. African women, Arabic women, white women, Hispanic women, they all, the, all their men get in line and understand if I ain't got shit, I ain't got no bitch. Mm-hmm. So only black American men are the ones that are like, I ain't got shit, but I still need a bitch. Yeah. Actually, I a bitch who can take care of me. Facts. That's how y'all's mentality is. And it's not it's the way disgusting. it goes around the world, but only us are get, we get, Talk down for expecting it out of, mm-hmm. out of a man while other race of women are like, it's okay for you to expect it's out of a okay, man. But I feel like it's expected when most times people that are of um, a different nationality, yeah. they marry for the money. They say, they said marrying is for the transfer of wealth. Okay. My mom told me if he has no money, he has no love. That's how it is. No money, no love. No money, no bitch. No money, no sex. No money, no food. Like, it's just how it goes. I'm going to say, yeah, we can really deepen to this because I feel like we feel it too personally I feel it right too now. personally because but. I'm just like we I'm tired of y'all trying to tell black women we are wrong for wanting a man who take care of us yeah we're not wrong we're not we're actually we right. will never be wrong and guess what I feel like until they get the cheat code y'all get what y'all deserve we gonna get what we have okay so. and I'm up and you stuck no <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So there was a video of a man referencing, I think it was Mel Robbins. I think that's he was on a podcast and he was talking about most times in relationships and or in most um I don't know relationships we always say is not just romantic, but I think specifically we always pretty much like piggyback off of that because it's more relative for us. Yeah. But it was saying <clears throat> there is a term called quiet quitting. And with quiet quitting, you're doing little things that you know your partner doesn't like and or you're doing just enough that your partner's like getting sick of you but you're not leaving yeah so quiet quitting is just like just showing up it's actually less than the bare minimum to be Mm -hmm. honest so in totality it's pretty much not one big fight or one big thing it's a lot of little things that nick at the relationship and just nick out of it Mm -hmm. until 
it's finally over. Okay. So how do you feel about quiet quitting? How I feel about quiet quitting? Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, it's important to let your partner know how you feel and what, you know, is going on in a relationship. But I understand why people do it because sometimes people feel helpless in a relationship yeah. and talking doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So you just stay in there more, just enough until you're able to move on. Because you know what? One thing a bitch always has is hope. Mm -hmm. I'm a bitch with hope because I, I had hope with old dude and his baby mama. It's like, I had hope. A bitch always got some hope. He said two. I said three. Oh, I thought she said two. No, I said three baby mamas. Um, so it's like, I get why we do it. I get why it's hard to fully let go. But it's like, if I just do, if I just show up enough, you know, maybe he'll realize I'm not in this fully and he will, you know, change. But I don't think that ever happens. I think like men just see you uh, pulling away and they're just like, oh, well, like, you, need to get you know, bitch now. <laughs> you, know bitch. you know, so how do you feel about quiet quitting? I think quiet quitting I kind of find it manipulative because it's like, I guess it's like, in my opinion, the same as breadcrumbing. Like it's like doing just enough mm -hmm. to make your partner feel like you're there, but you're really mentally gone. And I think when you're in a relationship to be mentally gone is actually worse than being physically gone. Because imagine being with someone and feeling lonely. Like, yeah, that's a lot of people. That's most I know, marriages. Saying, I feel like that's that's a scary way to live. And I feel like it puts so much self-doubt in you. It's like sometimes you don't even know why the quiet quitting is happening. Mm -hmm. And it's you're just you're in it. So uh, that's a whole nother thing. So have you ever quiet quit and why? I have actually. What I thought was quiet quitting wasn't really quiet quitting until you told me like, bitch, that's not quiet quitting. I'm just leaving the job. Yeah. But oh, we didn't talk about this. Yeah, you can quiet quit in other ways. Yeah, it's uh, not, it's not, not just, just relationship. It's definitely... Yeah everything yeah definitely um but i actually have i went it was my five-year relationship and i actually i did quiet quit because i just slowly pulled away mm -hmm. i slowly stopped having sex with him i slowly was just not texting him as much i wasn't like making future plans with him i wasn't i didn't care if he came to see me like i was just doing all these things that let him know like i'm pulling away but in his mind i wasn't really he just kept in his mind what to, to wait the way to saw that was to try harder yeah he kept putting all the effort i wish he was putting before yeah and at that point it was too late because i was like you could have done this you know six months ago and now you're doing all the things i wanted you to do because you realize i've checked out a relationship yeah and i just kept checking out until one day i found myself trying to cheat on him and i was like well sam if you're in a relationship if you're at a point in a relationship where you are at a, a nigga's place and you know you're doing this with another man you don't need to be with him anymore so i finally broke up with him when i realized oh I was, i'm about to cheat on you so i did do it and it was because he wasn't giving me the attention and the um appreciation i thought i deserved at the time and by the time he was doing it, I no longer wanted it from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? I absolutely quite quit quite frequently. <laughs> I think, and, and, it's, and, and it's a problem. It really is because it might be passive aggressive, but because I'm so <laughs> assertive and so, um, I'm so combative in other ways in my life that sometimes it's like, Yes, when we say we want to be in our feminine when it comes to our relationship, we yeah. absolutely do. I don't want to be operating in my masculine. So if I feel like I've been fighting the world and fighting my partner, that's two different battles that I don't want to do, especially when I'm laying down with this person. So for me, the reason why I quiet quit, because I feel like it's easier. It's so much easier because the times where I'm like, oh, let's break up. Two seconds that's later, when they want to fight. Together. No, that's when they want to fight and try to do or, everything. But I'm just saying, like, you'll say, well, let's break up, but it's not even really a breakup because if you're living with someone, how are you breaking up when y'all still got a lease? And mind you, this is when you're younger. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we don't have just money just, just to break up. Yeah. We have money to stay in the fucking house and see each other and be mad and go to the enough, different room. So that's why it's like, for me, it's like, quiet quitting is just like, we both have to get to this point where we're just like so disgusted with each other that it seems like it's both of our faults and not just one of ours, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why. I would do it. So what are some signs that you see if someone is quiet quitting on you? Uh, they won't commit to any future plans. So that's what I was doing. Like he would want to do, be like, oh, in two weeks you want to go here. You know, do it. I'll be like, well, I don't know if I can do that. You know, because I didn't know in two weeks if I was going to be with you or not. Yeah. So if anyone that you're dealing with doesn't have any desire to like do something like a week from now or two weeks from now, and this is someone that you've been dealing with, they're probably slowly uh, getting away from the relationship. Um, they stopped talking about happy memories with y'all. 
<laughs> yeah, anytime that happens. That is so sad. Mm-hmm, it's just like no more. Remember when, or, you know, that time when we did that, like just no oh, more happy memories. So sad. Yeah, I, have, I feel like this message is more for men for women because I feel like as a woman, we just notice, we just we just know when a guy acting different. Oh, yeah. When a we know immediately. We don't even need to know the signs. We, I, I feel like it's we like, feel it. You feel it even when you're having sex with them. When, you're, when your nigga is no longer present with you, you yeah, feel Yeah, you feel that. it. Even when old dude, like he didn't say nothing. I was like, then she changed. You did. You absolutely said that. <laughs> yeah. Then. So you, and you know what's crazy? The day before, we were, he asked me what the topic was. I said, it's quiet quitting. And he literally did that exact, I, it, it wasn't really quiet, but yeah, he tried he, to make it quiet I'm and I called it out. He came in like a rock and roll. Bro, right. So it's like, as women, we kind of know. So as a man, this is, this is really for y'all. When your bitch no longer talks about happy memories or want to make any future plans with you, she is quiet quitting the relationship. When they take long to reply to the text. Sir, if your bitch, you just text you good morning and now she won't text you at night. <laughs> She's trying to leave you. Um, it feels like they don't listen to how they, they don't listen. Wait. They don't listen like they used to. Yeah, it feels like they don't listen to how they used to. And I feel Because like I'm a bitch important. who's going to remember every detail. That's a fact. Like, so, when my nigga tell me was on his bucket list, I'm trying to make sure everything fucking yeah. happens. If I start forgetting like little shit like your birthday or what you eat on your sandwich when you eat the same thing every mm-hmm. time, it's like... It's no longer important to me to remember this information. Right. What's the last one? And the last thing is when they start arguing about petty things, which I feel like that's more of a nigga shit than a girl yeah. thing. Um, but whenever your nigga starts making creative arguments and start like finding reasons to fight with you, like I remember this one scene. I think it was I forgot what it was. It was a Mario movie, but he was trying to cheat on his bitch. So he started he started making a random argument with his girl. And she was like, what's wrong? It's it's a chicken. It was like some food. And he was just so mad about the food just so he can leave and cheat on her with another bitch. Oh, that's Gilmore yeah. Girls. That wasn't Gilmore Girls, girl. Remember when um, old boy kept arguing with him because he was fucking Rory? Okay, well, I guess it happened on Gilmore Girls, too. Yeah. But I'm talking about the the, the black people, okay? <laughs> it was some a black movie. And he, it, was it Martin or... or Eddie Murphy. I think it was Martin. Yeah. So, oh, maybe it was Eddie Murphy. It was, it was one of them comedian niggas. And he, huh? It was Chris yes. Rock. I think I love my wife. I think I love my wife. You're sick. <laughs> you are sick. I said Martin. Eddie Murphy. I said all the I other comedians. All, everyone except him. It was Chris Rock. I think I love my wife. It was about the chicken. It was like something she cooked. It was the chicken. It was I a chicken. remember. <laughs> That's why I keep saying I'm like, I'm like, that doesn't sound like I know that from either of them. <laughs> Like, started arguing with some chicken. She didn't do shit. He just wanted to cheat with another no, bitch. No, he wanted to cheat, but I know. But he the wanted point to, was, though. he, he wanted, wanted to cheat. That's why he wanted to make an issue. Yeah, so, so if he, he wants to cheat. He'd be justified in his cheating. His cheating. So when you're not gonna start causing unnecessary arguments, bitch, and you're like, what? Are, and you start questioning. I'm like, what did I do wrong? How could I, fix? bitch? A nigga ain't never gonna make me question myself. You gonna pick an argument with me? I already know what the fuck in the game is. I'm gonna beat you <laughs> to the fucking game, bitch. Don't you ever think you on up me? I play this game a lot longer. She said, I'm gonna cheat on you before you cheat on me. I play this <laughs> when game. When you think a about lo- cheating, I already cheated. I'm gonna say, don't don't even think about cheating on me. I promise you, I'd rather you just fucking leave me because I told you, I'm not all the way healed. So I will get my get back. I always tell Sammy. I'm gonna get that nigga back. I always say that shit. No matter who it is, I'd be like, I'd be like, guess what? It ain't happened yet, but when it do. And then I'm gonna act like nothing happened afterwards. <laughs> you don't think we're just in a love and fairy tale, but exactly. baby, I gotta get back. And That's I'm what happens. Y'all, I'm so good at it. Like, cause the thing is, I be fucking obsessed. But when you got me fucked up, you got me fucked up. That's Here all I gotta fucking say. So what do you do when you see those signs? So I think that it's pretty like self-explanatory, but these are things that we saw. I feel like don't wait for them to have that conversation with you. I think that when you see someone's quiet quitting, you're just like, oh my goodness, like, should we should we have this conversation? Like, should we talk about it? But I So don't, you think when you've noticed a sign, that's when you should start like having that conversation with them? I think that you, yeah, I feel like you should bring it up because I feel like you said, vocalize it right when you see it. Because if the longer you prolong it and yeah. think that it's going to change, they don't even think that they notice your change. Like, I feel like if you pay attention to your partner, you notice everything different about them. Oh, yeah. Like, if your nigga only used to get haircuts on Friday and all of a sudden now he get one every fucking week, you notice that shit. Yeah. So it's like, right when you see it, Call it out, because if not, if you, I feel like if you don't call it out, you are literally participating. You're lying in, to like, yourself. Yeah, you're participating in letting that shit happen, and you just are trying to be oblivious. Like, 
Let's not be stupid this year, bitches. Let's I'm not sorry. be stupid, bitches. Let's, we know what's going on. Women, we know. Like like I quoted before, if you like a nigga enough, you ain't, he ain't gonna lie to you. You would lie to yourself. That's a fact. So we know. So stop stop acting like you don't know when you know. You know when you're gonna get acting wrong. You know you're gonna get quiet quit on you. You know this, ladies. But if you value yourself, you say something about it. When you don't value yourself, you allow it to happen. I, I feel like sometimes it doesn't even seem if you don't value yourself. Because I feel like if you, if you see someone quiet quitting, you might try to match the energy. And I feel like we're not going to match energies. I feel like go where you're loved. Go where you are celebrated. Some women think, like, oh, he's going to pull back. I'm going to pull back harder. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like don't match energies. Like, I feel like absolutely within this time and frame that we're in, it's like go to where you're appreciated. Because you're just holding on to the inevitable if you're allowing that shit to be in your presence, in your universe. So mm-hmm. another thing is find time to talk when it's when it's not during a fight. I feel that many times when we do have all these, um, not even just in relationships, but even like in friendships, when you have all these pet peeves or icks, you wait until you're in an argument like, well, you remember a month ago you did this? Yeah. Because I feel like I'm, I'm a victim of it too because sometimes you try to save face in the moment but when you're arguing, you're like, what if this is the last argument we ever fucking have? I want them to know this fucking bothered me, you know? Yeah. So I feel like we need to it's start It's more being... for me. It's more like I'm mad now, so I'm going to tell you everything that bothered me. Yeah, and I feel like we got to stop doing that. I feel like have a conversation and have a fucking conversation and being a fucking adult. That goes with the first thing that but I said. But don't you feel like sometimes everything doesn't need it to be a conversation? I don't feel like everything needs to be a conversation, but if something constantly does bother you, I think at least voicing it, even if it's not for them, it's for you. Okay. You know, because like even when I'm like, I'm like, Sammy, I need you to be expressive to me. I need mm-hmm. you to be emotionally expressive. And I know it's not going to be an everyday conversation. But some days when I really do need you, yeah. I'm going to say it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel like you should definitely do that. Mm-hmm. And can I go? I got one more. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And the last thing is don't take it personally. And when we were on the phone, I know you kept saying, take it, I'm gonna take it personally if you do this. No, if someone is quiet quitting on you, they might have other shit in the background. Like you said with oh boy, he was B R O K E. Okay. (laughs) 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 The man was broke. There was nothing you could do to stop him from being broke. So whatever transpired is all because of an internal projection. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't take it personal when someone's broke. You can't take it personal when someone has baggage. You can't take those things personally. So someone quiet quits on me and I'm so sorry, but I'm in my villain era and I don't ever think I'm the fucking problem. You know why? Because I put my best foot forward until I don't. Mm-hmm. And I know I do because if anyone asks my friends, I'm like, like, I'm like a kind of, del- I live in this delusional world a lot of times. So once you take me out of that delusion world and I'm like in the real world, you got, you have the game fucked up. Okay. So do you think you can come back from quiet quitting? I think the only way you can come back from quiet quitting is if you want to come back from quiet quitting. And I think that most times when people have quiet quitting, it's because they have no intention on caring on how you view them. Because I feel like if you keep doing very passive aggressive things that you know that your partner doesn't like, like, like they said in the video, he's like, if you know your wife doesn't like when you don't make the bed, so you continuously stop, just, just don't make the bed. When she knows that you like putting this something there, like you start doing things that you know bothers your partner intentionally. It's because you want to look like the good guy when y'all break up. Like, I did what I did all I could. Yeah. So do you think that you can? I don't think you come back from quiet quitting. I don't think so. I feel like once you put it in motion, especially as a woman, once we because like I said, one thing a bitch always has is hope. So we're gonna keep trying to give you the last motherfucking chance that we can give you until we're like, well, this nigga really don't want to get it. You know, we've seen a bitch hold on. We've seen a bitch hold on to threads. And we're like, bitch, why are you holding on? Because a bitch always got hope. So once she gets to the point where she's quiet quitting on you, all all hope is lost. Honestly. Because she's tried. Yeah. She's given you chance with a chance. Yeah. She made it, she gave you every possible way for you to make that work, make this work, and you still chose not to. Yeah. So I really when a nigga gives up on you, I feel like you can come back. And they give up oh, easily. honestly, honestly, yeah. because the thing is, when niggas give up on you, when a nigga they, starts quiet quitting, you can do shit to make I, him come I, back. Yeah, because I feel like when a nigga gives up on you, it's because he thinks he found something better, and or he's trying to entertain something that he yeah. feels would fulfill him more. Mm-hmm. Men do it for fulfillment. We do it for 
our our sanity. Our, our sanity. Yeah. yeah. They they only do it for entertainment because I feel like if you have that, I mean, men are real good for like you know breaking up with a bitch if they got them fucked up. But if you are a good girlfriend, they're like, oh, let me just try to quiet quick because you know it's kind of boring right now. Yeah. But. Cause we do it because we, we've fucking had it. Hello. So when Sick a man quiet quits on you, bitch, you just throw him some pussy. Do some do something extra <laughs> and you give that nigga back. But if a bitch quiet quit on you, yeah, there's really no coming there's back. There's no coming back. Just take your L and move on to the next bitch who won't step your who step whatever the fuck you can try to give him. Okay, so what a relationship X that will probably put you in that state of quiet quitting? Being broke. Okay. As soon as I find out you have no money, I'm quiet quitting on you. Yeah. Not even quietly. I'm just gonna stop talking to you. I think relationship X for me that would get me to quiet quit is not um, not listening because I don't like repeating myself mm -hmm. and I don't like micromanaging in an adult. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I have to constantly tell you the same thing, if I tell you more than twice. Yeah. I already got something in play for your ass because I'm like, if I got to keep telling a grown ass man the same how thing. I feel about something. And I always that was one say, of mine. Mm -hmm. I feel like for me, I said you could tell if someone respects you if they listen to you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that simple. Yeah. So another ick I got to make me quite quit on you is catching you in lies. Yes. If I'm oh catching you in multiple lies, I'm just I'm just like, nigga, you just a lying ass dog. Like, especially when they're dumb lies too, like about where you at or what you were doing or, you know, not even things you should be lying about. Oh my God. I that's like, that's that will make me quiet quit immediately if i keep catching my nigga in lies i'm just like mm -hmm. and i feel like <sighs> if, <laughs> if you lie don't let me fucking catch you yeah that's all i gotta say because i won't even tell you that i caught you in the lie but i'm gonna that's tell my thing bitches, we're not even gonna, we're not gonna tell, tell you, you. We, we caught gonna, you but we gonna tell our friends we gonna tally that up okay come in this lie and i caught like him a lie right now like that's a problem too i feel like my relationship ick is when i feel like i start i gotta start doing tit for tat mm -hmm. when i feel like i'm like when i feel like i gotta get you back for shit that you did for to me, that's when I know I got to quiet it quick. Because I'm right. like, why do I want revenge on you? You are not my enemy. Mm -hmm. But when I start feeling like you're my enemy, oh, you're going to feel, you gonna feel right. this wrath. No. When, when you start not being a man of your word, mm. I'm definitely going to quiet quit on you. When you say, I'm going to do this, and you especially when it's unprovoked. When a man tells me he's going to do something unprovoked and don't do it, mm. I think that's the fastest way to get my pussy dried up. Because I'm just like, I didn't even ask for this. Yeah. You, and then you, the thing is, when you're, when you're a man to do something, you kind of get your hopes up because you believe it because that's your man. Yeah. Not some nigga, your man. Yeah. So it's like, when you don't do that, it's like, okay, like, clearly you showing me if anything was to happen in a relationship, you're not going to be a man of your word. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to slowly mm. leave this relationship. I hate that. Mm. I don't have any more eggs, do you? Um, my, another one is, uh, does not give me money and buy me things. If we're dating and you are not giving me money and buying me things, that's an ick and I'm quite quitting. Miss mm -mm. <laughs> fuck you. That's the truth. So why do you feel like people quiet quit and not just break up? Like I said, one thing a bitch always got is hope. Yeah. Because we hope he gonna change. We hope he gonna do better. We hope he gonna see the error of his ways. But bitch, they barely, rarely ever do. Yeah. Some niggas do. Some niggas see like they're, you know, their bitch pulling away and be like, damn, I gotta, I gotta get her. And then sometimes what they do is they act good for like a little bit mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and they the revert thing. back to what they were doing. So, um, yeah, that's... What was your question? I'm sorry. Quiet, quit, and not break up. Yeah. So when we feel like, when we see you doing that little bit of effort, we get real back in, and then it's just like, okay, he's back to what he was doing before. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why. I think the reason why people quiet, quit instead of breaking up, because I can only speak from my um, perspective. Sometimes it's cheaper. Say what? Sometimes it's cheaper. No, I'm saying, no, <laughs> I, I feel like it just lessens the blow. Yeah. Because for me, yeah, it lessens I the knew blow. I was going to break up with my boyfriend of seven years, but instead of me breaking up with him, I said, let's give you an open relationship. And with being in an open relationship, I was like, okay, he can date other people. Yeah. So then it won't be only it focused the on blow. me. Mm -hmm. So when we do break up, he'll still feel like, okay, well, she didn't take seven years of my life and what do I have to show for it? You yeah. Know? I want him to say, you know, I've been dating fucking other bitches uh, 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 and now we broke up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to lessen the blow for you because I was ready. <laughs> no, I'm being dead ass and I feel like it, it sounds You know bad. what? I want to tell you something. What? I want to let you know ever since you did leave your relationship, you have turn into a whole butterfly you I, I don't want to say he was holding you back but I was like, you've definitely just shined. Yeah. You are a 
you just you you grew. I, you, I did, and, and and it's so crazy. It, and it was a good does, thing. Everyone says that it was a good thing for you. You you got out of your box, and you're like, I'm Ami, and this is and this and, is and me. And the thing is, because a lot of times I did not want to be authentically everything me because he was a man of. Um, he was a man that thought that the world was greater than the person. So he had like such big dreams and big this and big that. And I didn't want to look like that crazy wild out girlfriend that he yeah. had. And it was like, so you preaching these things, but your girlfriend's a fucking hoodlum, you know? Yeah. So a lot of times I did try to like reel it in. So it didn't but look you, like you a- can't be with someone who duels your shine. And, and what, I mean, now that I know that I, yeah. I can't do, I can't. And now you're shining bright like a diamond. I know. Thank you. Cause look I, at I, you just honestly, shining. I've heard that a lot. So yeah. it's so crazy. I love you so much as a person. She you are but yeah it had to happen it had to happen <laughs> it had to happen because honestly when i first saw you and him together i was like how is this person with this and person everyone said that to me they were like they were i like, remember they when were you like, came like, to that club it was me and old girl who were still friends yeah, and you came and like, i'm just like not even no you weren't the other person. they're like they're like we don't see it how did it happen and i literally keep telling people i was like i feel like it's because when i you first were 19 moved to, I, and he was like literally the first guy that was taking me on dates and doing stuff for me because mm-hmm. when i first moved to houston like i was just i was coming off of being the token black friend i was coming off of not being attractive to anyone yeah. so for me in my psyche i'm like oh my god someone wants to date me someone wants to see me out in public someone, yeah. like all these things were like and then when i was like damn and then I always keep telling myself, it's always going to get better. It's always going to get better. And every time, every person I dated after him, I'm like. Yeah. So, so I'm glad. I'm Honestly, I'm I'm sad for him, but glad for you. Yeah, you know what? You up and he's. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when it comes to quiet quitting, who do you feel like does it more often? It depends. I feel like men quiet quit when it's um, casual. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah, they do. As soon as he feels like, oh, I got to put effort and just, and I can't, I don't want to put effort on a bitch. I got to mm-hmm. try hard or any, anything like that you require that he does, is not willing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, men definitely quiet quit in the early stages. I feel like women tend to quiet quit in relationships. Mm. Like whenever we are dating the dude and we're not feeling it we tell him hey i'm not feeling it like you know you do your thing i do my thing yeah when we're actually like you we try to spare your feelings more yeah so it's like when we're in a relationship we don't want to directly tell you we're over it yeah so we let you know by our actions that we're Facts. over it so That's hopefully you, hopefully you get the message and like break up with me before i have to break up with you yeah so yeah that that was our flaw we quite quit in relationships and but we don't quite quit when it's casual dating we, we like we're like nigga I'm, i don't like this i don't like, like you i'm gonna <laughs> tell you i'm gonna entertain the fuck out of a situation yeah. yeah but in my relationship i'm gonna just coast through I'm like coast we through we just tend to be more like and careful because also and yeah and i feel like the reason why you just said that is because we care about your fucking Feelings. feelings yeah that's that's we, it we want to listen to blow so we get into some motherfucking questions listen to some motherfucking questions i love that we're doing episodes like lower than an hour like is this us are we the, are, i've are we always the new liked 45 girls? minutes episodes i think we're in the new eight girls go ahead <laughs> my question to you is would you have would you notice if your partner tried to quiet quit on you i think i would notice but it depends on my amount of care because if I, <laughs> no honestly if, no that's true you no know, i'm telling you if, if yeah. i see that my nigga's moving funny and i really am like okay you want you've been skating on thin ice anyway so nigga right. i i don't give a fuck i can move funny with you and the thing is i don't even care if if I'm the villain in your story, because I already know where I'm going to end up at the end of it. Mm-hmm. So if you want to act like, oh, she did this, she did this to me and like act like I'm OK, be the victim. It's OK, mm-hmm. because at the end of the fucking day, I have a ninety nine point nine percent return rate. I have never tried to get bitch. No, I'm being dead ass. But we do. I'm, I, I, every nigga that I've stopped talking to try to talk to always me again. Always come back. Because I know, always come back. I'm, I'm a really good girlfriend and I'm a really good person to date. Like that's and that's not even a that's like my biggest fucking flex. Like y'all think that y'all know, but y'all really don't know. Cause I'm a real fucking trick and I treat niggas very well. So that's me. So for me, what is my question is, what's worse, quiet quitting or ghosting? Ghosting. Is it really? I think ghosting is worse because quiet quitting, you see the signs. Ghosting, you ain't seen no sign. It just happened. So I feel like sometimes ghosting is necessary though. Cause I feel like ghosting is definitely necessary. I've I've definitely I feel like sometimes niggas deserve to get ghosted or women deserve to get ghosted. But when you're in a relationship with someone and they yeah. just fucking ghost, ghost you, you. Yeah. That's like what the traumatic. Fuck? Extremely that's traumatic. traumatic. Yeah, that is okay. Yeah. If you're just talking to someone and they ghost you, on to the next one. But I'm thinking quiet quitting as we're in a relationship. So 
No, if I'm with someone and they just randomly just stop talking to me, that's definitely more traumatic than someone quiet quitting on me. Because then with the quiet quitting, I saw the sign. Yeah. It, it was a it was a progression. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, now it happened. Okay. But baby, don't wake up and leave me. Please don't. Like, oh my God. Don't please don't wake up and leave me, bitch. <laughs> okay, what's your next question? My next question is, what is the fastest way a man work? Okay, what is the fastest way a man can turn you off? Fastest way a man can turn me off. Is this like it just in general? Mm-hmm. Um, his grammar. Um, his grammar. Grammar yes. definitely is a turn grammar. off. Um, his hygiene. Okay. And what else is it? Just just unprovoked lies that that unprovoked lies. Off. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. like, I feel like as a woman that is as progressive and feminist as I am, I'm still very open to a lot of some traditional things. Mm-hmm. So for me. All those things that fall under the category of you just doing shit that is unprovoked. It's like you ain't even have to do that shit. Right. (laughs) You ain't got a lot to kick it. And don't. But y'all still do. Okay. So, do you feel like there's anything worse? No. Uh, Is there a more manipulative way to deal with someone other than quiet quitting? See, I don't find quiet quitting manipulative. I found quiet quitting um, passive aggressive. I find it manipulative. I don't because I feel like if you're being manipulative, you were trying, to, you're telling them one thing and doing another. That's to me is manipulating someone. When you're quiet and quitting, you're telling them exactly what you're doing. You're just, you're just doing what your actions, not what your words. So, I mean, but don't we always say that communication sometimes is 90% nonverbal? So if we're taking that into account, when you were saying how you were treating your man, and he started acting how you want him to act. Do you not find that manipulative? Because instead of just like breaking up with him, he was just like, I'm going to let him keep doing this shit and I'm going to just string it along. I don't find it manipulative because I, like I said, it's if it's saying one thing and doing another. Yeah. So if I'm not saying anything and my actions are telling you how I'm treating you, then it's not manipulative. It's passive aggressive yeah. because I'm not telling you it. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you it. Yeah. So um, a lot of times we feel like, oh, we, we, that's what a lot of times we talk about action, action, action. You can say one thing, but what are you doing? Yeah. So we already know not to believe what people say. Yeah. We believe what people show us. Yeah. So I'm showing you that I'm quiet quitting, but if you are not catching what I'm throwing, that's your fault. Yeah. But is that right? I don't think it's right. I think it's also right to also tell the person yeah. what you're what you are doing. And I feel like we, and not just show I think them. we're missing that step. Most yeah. times there's not the communication in between. It's just the showing. It's and we're showing. like, well, that's like, good enough because he see what I'm doing. Exactly. And but it's like one thing about us, that. we would lie, we would lie to ourselves. Exactly. We, we would see the action and be like, Well, it's okay. Mm. And just like women, men lie to themselves too. They see the action and be like, well, that's okay. They yeah. will move past it. So that, so yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I don't have any more questions because that was my last one. Uh, I'm going to answer the question. What is the fastest way to turn myself off? Being broke. Girl, you didn't even have to answer that for us to know. I, I just wanted to say, I just remind y'all that I don't like, I don't like broke. I niggas. feel like it's because you feel it in your soul. You feel like you need to say it in every aspect of I your life. I need to say it in every aspect because I, f- don't be broke. Anyways, thank you for following us on this journey. Um, I think it was pretty good. I mean, like quiet quitting is something that happens in everyday life. I just feel like if you know the signs, you know what to do and you know how to take care of yourself mm-hmm. and or else ways all of the above. And while you're at it, please follow us on all social media platforms at The Real Sip and Spill, except Twitter, which is Sip and Spill One. And give us a five star rating because we're some five, five star, star bitches. bitches. Ow. Ow. I sip wine, wine, wine Kick my feet up when I get tired And as I recline Take another sip, let my thoughts on wine, wine Sip it and spill it Sip it and spill it, sip it and spill it the tea